Hi, uh, my name is Zafari Abhader. Uh, I and Abhilash Durgam are working on a project B2 version 2 masked image modeling with vector quantized visual organizers for breast cancer images. And uh, this project uh, is uh, as a requirement for projects in the deep learning course. Uh, so in this, we'll be talking about the motivation behind this course and the data set that we are using uh, and the overview of the model that we will be using and the training and pre-training that we have done on the model with our data sets and uh, with the uh, weights and the data sets that were pre-trained and given to us. And then we had a uh, comparison of results between uh, the pre-trained models and the models that we trained. And then uh, we'll talk about the fine tuning of the classifications and show you some results that we got. And uh, what are the things that we are currently working on and uh, possibly will continue working on in the future as well. Uh, so the motivation behind working on this project is uh, because cancer is a very uh, common thing that's happening nowadays. And according to the American Cancer Society, breast cancer is like most common type of cancer nowadays in the United States. And uh, in 21, uh, it was said that about 30% of all the new cancer cases in women are breast cancer. So breast cancer is a very uh, uh, issue uh, uh, that is, you know, engrossing a lot of uh, population uh, in the U.S. and across the globe, uh, to be fair. So we need to have uh, more uh, trained uh, people to in order to uh, find uh, the cancer cells in the images. Now, these are the works that are carried out by the pathologist, and uh, we don't have such huge number of pathologists and uh, number of cases arising. So in order to automate this process and help the pathologist, uh, we always uh, are looking for better deep uh, learning networks that could actually uh, recognize and differentiate between a cancer image and a non-cancer image. And that is the motivation behind working on this project so that we can develop a robust deep learning model. <clears throat> so another thing that's important when we talk about like pathological images and all so these are uh, like whole slide images so these are huge images and uh, these images have to be annotated and we don't have enough of an annotated images present to us so whatever number of annotated images we have from that we have to pre-train our model so that they become self-supervised uh, enough to label the data themselves so the hence the work uh, word came like self-supervised pre-trained models so it is like that whatever information you have right now you use that information for supervised pre-training and then whatever uh code book encodings and embeddings that you have generated out of it you use them in order to self-supervise uh uh, encoding in the future images that you will be getting so annotations is a big problem uh, in this particular field and the data sizes are huge and we have to work uh, in the patches of the those data through the self-supervised uh, methods uh, one of the ways of attaining like self-supervised is a contrastive learning kind of situation where you try to generate multiple images out of one image and then you try to uh, do a various data augmentation techniques and you find a correlation between the same images and you try to create a contrast between the uh, different kind of images. So there are many other uh, uh, models for this self-supervised learning as well. Uh, so this VIT pre-training, the name is Vision Transformation Transformers. These have achieved uh, promising results uh, in the, lately uh, in this particular field. Uh, the problem with the VITs are that they are very annotation hungry. And annotation, as I said, is one of the problems that we are facing. Besides them, there is a uh, diet model as well, which was introduced in 2021 by Hugo. Uh, and this model was uh, considered to be more efficiently trained to transformer for image classification. Uh, and this was developed in response to VIT, basically, because so. Uh, it demonstrated uh, that the transformer models can achieve competitive performance on image classification task and requires a, a, a less ex extensive training as compared to the VIT. And again, in both the cases, the problem is the uh, VITs or DITs, whatever we talk about, are annotation hungry. So the data set that we will be using for our uh, particular uh, project is uh, from the uh, Chameleon 17 uh, breast cancer data set. Uh, and uh, this contains a lot of uh, uh, images that have been annotated by various uh, universities. Uh, but we have taken the data, or rather uh, it was provided to us by the Professor Zhu's uh, uh, research group. So uh, they derived like 
some patches like 20,547 patches from 100 WSI images of the cancer cells. And some of the samples are given here. So the first three are uh, depicting the cancer uh, images and the last two are the normal images. And as you could see, it's very difficult to find out from the naked eye without any experience uh, uh, to create a distinction between what is cancer and what is not because only the second image looks like cancer and all other are like, they are diffuse boundaries. You cannot make a, dif a differentiation. So all these five classes were present in the data sets uh, that we have. So out of uh, the 20,000 images, we have segregated them into like 16,000 images for training and the remaining 4,000 images for testing. So testing of uh, cancer images, we had like 1,981 images. Normal, we have 2,429. For training cancer, we had 6,738 images and uh, normal images were 9,319 on which we performed the uh, test. For our data sets, so what we did, instead of looking for the five classes of data set, we divided into just two classes. So the first three images belong to one class that is your cancer class and the next two images belong to your class that is called as a normal class. So it's like a binary classification that we are doing with the images. Now uh, it's a turn of the beat overview, the model that we used to uh, train uh, on these data sets and this will be explained by uh, Abhilash. Thank you, Zafriya. BAIT stands for Bidirectional Encoder from Image Transformer. The paper aims to provide a self-supervised learning pre-training step for image transformers. As previously mentioned by Zafriya, BITs are notoriously annotation hungry and hence require a huge amount of data for training. So this BAIT proposes a pre-training step which makes users of a large amount of unannotated data, and then fine tuning to make sure that the model converges quickly to a higher accuracy. So uh, BAIT takes its inspiration from BERT for, for natural language processing models, where BERT encodes onto a dictionary uh, or one hot encoding. BAIT generates a token based on a trained code book. So let's see how it works. So let's talk about the structure of bait. Bait has, uh, this is the bait model. Bait has a trained tokenized encoder, which encodes vis a picture into visual tokens used by a, using a code book, as mentioned earlier. And the, uh, the objective, uh, the training objective in the pre-training is to predict what will be the uh, visual tokens for a masked image fed into bait. During pre-training, a patch aggregation strategy is also employed wherein the CLS token is taken from the last layer and the patch tokens are taken from an arbitrary layer in the beginning. Uh, this is done in a view that the CLS token encodes uh, positional information and once it has an overview of what a picture looks like, for example, once it has an overview of what a bird looks like, it, it can have a better prediction strategy. So the loss is the total loss between the MIM head and the patch aggregation strategy MIM head. So once we have trained the bait encoder, we, it, uh, we fine tune the model. The fine tuning can be any layer. So you can have an image classification layer, which is a soft max classifier or semantic segmentation or task other task layers for object detection. So this is a bait encoder. It, it takes in inputs just like a normal uh, uh, transformer does, flattened uh, patches. And the task layer is randomly initialized and the pre-trained model uh, pre-trained weights are fed into the bait encoder. Okay, so let's move to the first part of bait training. So the first thing which we need to do is VQ VQKD training. VQKD is essentially a structure wherein uh, we have a tokenizer which generates certain visual tokens. And then we have a, a decoder which decodes this visual tokens uh, and tries to achieve a semantic segmentation. The, the objective is to uh, have um, 
The objective is to reduce the reconstruction loss between the input image and the semantics reconstruction provided by a teacher model. In our case, is a clip. So uh, these visual to uh, tokens are gener generated based upon codebook em embeddings, wherein codebook depicts the pictures of uh, various features of the pictures. So this is uh, what a visual codebook looks like. So it's the nearest neighbor. So uh, all the codebooks which are closer to let's say uh, these uh, V two seven seven four looks like tongues, and uh, at this point they look like noses and human ears, and so it's based upon the nearest neighbor on a two dimension on an n dimensional space. So in our case, VQKD training, we trained it on the cancer data set. VQKD was trained on the cancer data set for 150 epochs. Since, since it was a self-supervised uh, learning, reconstruction loss was calculated. The reconstruction loss as seen has, uh, after 150 epochs has converged and that's when the training was stopped. So another uh, important information to keep in mind is that VQKD has a code book. So the objective uh, is to use as much of the code book as possible. If you use the most amount of code book, that means you have captured the most amount of features from your images. So uh, this plot uh, charts the code book user usage set statistics. So it was initialized with 8192 dimensions. And then after 140 epochs, it reduced to a, uh, uh, reduced to 7,750 uh, uh, dimensions. So 32 remained same, and it reduced to 7,750 dimensions. Once it done, it performs codebook collapse, where it's, it only uses the codebook which has is initialized. So once we have our uh, tokenizer from the uh, uh, from the VQKD training depicted uh, before, we we are now able to generate accurate visual tokens given an original image. So now we uh, split the original image image into image patches, perform blockwise masking, flatten these image patches, and uh, have position embedding, and feed them into a bait encoder. And using a masked image modeling head, we ask our bait encoder to predict the visual token at the ma uh, masked position. So if you notice the at position two, it's masked. So um, 234 is the prediction of the bait, and this is matched with the prediction of the tokenizer. This is the pre-training step. So for the cancer uh, data set, the pre uh, bait was pre-trained on cancer data set. Uh, using the custom trained VQKD tokenizer for 720 epochs. And the loss was calculated. As you can see, it has converged to a point where, wherein it was flattened. So that's when we stopped training it. And now uh, the pre-trained bait model is ready for the fine tuning. Fine tuning for classification. The bait model pre-trained on cancer data set with a classification task layer appended to it was trained for 30 epochs. Uh, this resulted in an accuracy of 94.8%. So as you can see, uh, it converged pretty quickly for a VIT. So to keep this result in perspective, we have done a couple of experiments. One experiment uh, with classification is we have trained it with random initialization, which is not pre-trained for same 30 epochs. And we uh, this resulted in an accuracy of 81.2. As you can clearly see, our model has converged way quicker. However, we also uh, trained uh, trained on ImageNet. This resulted on, in an accuracy of 97.2, which is the highest accuracy we have achieved. Uh, with this, we drew a certain conclusion that since uh, the uh, ImageNet is a huge uh, database of images of many of 21K classes and uh, over 14 million images. 
uh, it is understandable that the model pre-trained on it has a better uh, overview of what an image looks like than our model, which was trained only on 16,000 classes, 16,000 images, sorry. So, um, okay, we thought maybe we can uh, tra le transfer learn this image. Uh, transfer learning, we tried transfer learning it for 15 epochs, but uh, similar no, uh, results were noticed. Uh, we came to the conclusion that this might be because the code uh, code books vary. Um, we, our VQKD was specially trained for our cancer data set, whereas the ImageNet code book was trained for the uh, for the usage uh, in Ima ImageNet data set. So these are our final results. Uh, as you can see, uh, not pre-trained performs much worse than any pre-trained model. So uh, vindicating bait to be an efficient strategy in uh, mass image modeling pre-training. And uh, transfer learning has uh, kept up with the accuracy of uh, pre-trained on ImageNet uh, in 15 epochs. It's uh, following the accuracy. And uh, pre-trained on the cancer data set shows uh, a, a lower level of accuracy, but with more data, it would it would theoretically converge much much quicker because it has a more specialized learning on the cancer data set. So we uh, plotted the confusion matrix over the test data set, which was generated with the best model. The confusion matrix was on the scale of 10. So uh, this is our confusion matrix. So uh, for our future work, we will look to uh, fine tune the hyperparameters, making them tailored for the cancer data set. Uh, we have taken the hyperparameters directly, uh, uh, directly from um, the bait paper, which was uh, uh, which was for the ImageNet data set. But of course, uh, the data sets are vastly different. Uh, transfer learning strategies which can surpass the model pre-trained in ImageNet is one thing we are looking into because uh, surely a specialized model will perform much better than a model which has been trained on uh, images which are unrelated to cancer. And uh, after that, we would move on to cancer image segmentation wherein we would look to find the tumor boundaries based on the ground truths. These are our references. Thank you. Now I'll hand over to uh, Zafaya. He's going to go over the uh, interactive code notebook code notebook file which we have created for the easy running of bait. Thank you. Thank you, Abhilash, uh, for this wonderful presentation. And now let me quickly take you to the iPath notebook. So this is where our code is uh, these are the files that we'll be using, but we are not going through everything. I'll just uh, tell you that we have created a main.i Python notebook where uh, we imported the necessary libraries and we will tell you the what exactly commands to run in order to uh, run this uh, code for your data sets as well. Uh, so this is the data set and this is the model that uh, um, Abhilash has already explained how it works. And uh, VQ uh, carry training. So if you if you want to uh, train our uh, VQKD, we have to call a Python with uh, the uh, run VQKD training dot py file. And this is your n number of processors. Uh, so we, since we were uh, running on our GPU and it was not supporting us the n processors, so we went for the value like one. So we just used one node, and therefore it took a lot of time in uh, training and pre-training our models. And then you set your uh, data paths and the evaluation paths and the output directory where your logs will be uh, maintained for the training. And uh, a few hyperparameters that have been mentioned here. And one more thing that for VQKD encoder, uh, there are two options available and we went for like uh, the clip option. Uh, there is another one that is Dino. 
uh, and then these are the values for the habit parameters that we have used the dimensions of the code book. Uh, these were mentioned in the slides as well, so you can cross verify them. And this is the size of the input that we are entering. This is the optimizer that we are using, which is Adam. Batch size, we could manage 64 and less than 64 because again, the CUDA was not supporting a higher uh, batch size for us. Uh, and uh, the results, the reconstruction loss uh, has already been explained in the slides. Uh, for the VQK training, and the loss uh, reduces significantly in the early epochs. And uh, same with the code book dimensions, we were able to use more of the code book in after 140 epochs as compared to the first epoch that we had faced. Then for beat uh, pre-training, uh, the code is that you can run beat version 2 pre-training.py. Uh, again, you can set the data set images and the paths so from where the data set should be loaded and um, trained on and you can set the path of the output where the logs uh, would be maintained. Uh, and we went for like, uh, again, the clip uh, decoder model for the beat training. And uh, uh, we went for uh, 720 epochs uh, to be precise, 722, yeah. Now we stopped at 722 uh, because uh, uh, we we saw the flattening of the uh, loss at that point. Uh, originally, it was recommended to go for 1600 epochs, uh, and it it took a lot of time uh, for us to do 700 epochs, like two days. Uh, then for beat fine tuning, the code is uh, run class fine uh, Again, you can set your parameters as given uh, in this IP, uh, IPython notebook. Uh, and with these parameters, you should be able to run the fine tuning. And here uh, we are, are giving a brief idea about the model and the data that has been fed into this model. And then we uh, did a evaluation uh, on the model as well. And we found this confusion matrix and all these details are given in the uh, presentation uh, that we made a few seconds ago. Uh, so thank you for the patient hearing. Uh, this is all from us.